Investigators have identified one of the victims in what media is now calling the suitcase murders. The known victim is Laura Simonson, a divorced mom reported missing about seven months earlier. She was last seen at a hotel in Rochester, Minnesota, almost 300 miles from where her body was found near Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. The victim was from Minnesota. What's she doing hundreds of miles away from home? Like, who brought her here? Where did they kill her? How did she die? A good friend of Laura's uncovered that she'd been exchanging messages with someone on a BDSM website. On a uh, website called uh, callerme.com. And there it was, 50-year-old male dominant, you know, seeking 24-7 slave. And there was a picture of him, you know, sitting on a couch like, like a normal Joe. His profile name on there was Mr. Handcuffs. Laura's conversations with Mr. Handcuffs seemed to go beyond role-playing and virtual fantasy. She wanted to give him full control. And in these messages, he also, um, he mentions that um, it's important that if they would meet that she's gonna be 24 seven. So now she has to disappear. Laura's close friend, Jeff, had been doing his own research into her internet history. He found emails she'd exchanged with Mr. Handcuffs that led him to a real name, Stephen Zellig. I punch up uh, Stephen Zellick in, in, through a uh, database that we have access to. I found a, a Stephen Mark Zellick. And he had an address in West Allis, uh, Wisconsin, which is basically a suburb of Milwaukee. After finding out, you know, who, who this Stephen uh, Zellick was, I contacted the West Allis Police Department. The captain of the West Allis Police Department uh, contacted me and kind of said, may I ask why you're asking about Stephen Zellick? And he kind of kind of kind of chuckles a little bit and um, and kind of goes, let me tell you about Zellick. Stephen Zellick was a West Dallas police officer, a West Dallas police officer who had lost his job because of a repeated pattern of unsettling, disturbing behavior regarding women. The local um, hair salon, a worker there, was saying he would come in and continuously ask her for a date. He was going to local strip clubs in uniform and essentially harassing the women who worked there. He would follow these girls. He'd follow them after work. He'd stop them in the squad car on the way home from work. He would do surveillance on them. And then these people would come forward and they would share these complaints with West Dallas PD. He had been disciplined 10 times in his career uh, for that and for other things. There was a situation outside his own house where a woman from the strip club had gone back to his place and was found running outside for safety in nothing but her underwear. He got out the handcuffs and was going to do something to her. And she got scared, runs out into the middle of traffic, causes a bit of disturbance. Selich claimed at the time that the woman had stolen cash from his wallet, and when he tried to get it back, they wrestled over the money. He resigned shortly after the incident. Because he was never charged with anything, he had no criminal record, he was easily able to get a job as a security officer. Selich is now employed as a security guard contracted to patrol a large international corporation. Is he the same man seen on surveillance video at the hotel? where Laura Simonson was last seen. In my conversation uh, with the uh, captain of the West Dallas Police Department, I, I advised him that I uh, you know, had a photo of a male that I thought was maybe Stephen Zellick, but I wasn't sure. So um, I sent it to the uh, captain, and right when he got it, he right away said, yeah, that's Zellick. Not only does he have a name, he's got a face, that's Steve Zellick, but where is Laura? You know, Steve walks out of the hotel, but there's no Laura Simonson with him. West Dallas PD pays Stephen Zellich a visit at his home in January of 2014. I requested the West Dallas Police Department talk to Zellich and ask him when's the last time he spoke with Laura. There was no sign of Laura in the house. There was no female clothing. He stated that he never met Laura in person um, and it was just all on online fun. 
A couple of months later, with other potential leads running dry, Zelich gets another visit from law enforcement, this time the Wisconsin Division of Criminal Investigation and the FBI. Regarding Laura, she's missing. And uh, of course, her family's worried. And, and um, I guess what we're here for is to ask you, when, when you last saw her, how did you come to know her? Well, just, just the uh, online. We're just here to try to see if we can get any info. Um, you knew her. Well, I, you know, and I, I, ooh, I cringe. I understand there was some. I didn't know her. I mean, that's, that's, that's even stretching it a bit. I don't really know her. And you indicated that she did want to try to meet. I think she wanted to meet. I think there was some inference in conversation, mostly on her part. But I don't. Uh, I have no intention. Of meeting. You had no intention of meeting. No. Why? Just because it was it was really just interesting, fun recreation conversation online. And that's really what it is. The information that Zelik was giving uh, uh, Gil Hernandez and the FBI agent was a pretty much the same. That you know he, he he met her online, never met her in person. It was just fantasy to him, and you know. Basically, he doesn't know where she was at. There was nothing to prove Stephen Zellich knew what happened to Laura Simonson, but investigators did get one key thing from their visit. Stephen, what would you say? If I asked you for a sample of your DNA, would you be willing to uh, offer it to me? Yes. Eventually, they, they asked him for a sample of his DNA. Zellich was just sweat profusely during the interview. It might have been fear why he gave that DNA sample. Eventually, I get a phone call from an analyst at the crime lab. She said that she had examined the rope, she untied the knot, and then took a, a DNA swab. And that DNA swab came back and had Steven Zellick's DNA. That was gigantic. That was huge. Uh, I'll never forget that moment. I said, we need to have another meeting right now. I just got some really big information. So we, we get everybody back together, I said, I just got a phone call from the analyst and that his DNA was inside the rope. Crickets. Everybody just stood there, their mouths wide open. I said, starting now, this is no longer just an investigation. It's time to move forward and go do a search warrants and go interview Steve and take him into custody. Just 20 days since suitcases containing the remains of two women were found near a Wisconsin highway. Investigators in two states have pieced together enough evidence to close in on their prime suspect. Stephen Zelich is still in his security guard uniform when he's brought in for questioning. When authorities in Wisconsin went to arrest him, um, I was at his apartment helping with the with the search warrant. If you were to read about this or hear about it, you would think that he would be in a, a rundown old house in a really bad neighborhood. It was a nice little apartment building, but uh, inside it was just basically not kept up, not clean, and um, kind of filthy. What they found in uh, Zelik's apartment, uh, their suitcase, but inside this suitcase uh, was, you know, basically BDSM um, equipment and toys. Uh, the leather straps, uh, whips, um, some you know handcuffs, ball gags, uh, things like that. I did get Zelich's DNA as well as Laura's DNA um, back on a set of handcuffs. They were in his apartment um, right off the kitchen. In a series of interviews with detectives, Zelich drops a bombshell. Zelich admits he kept the body of one of the victims the woman whose identity was still unknown, in the refrigerator in his home for a year. I'll never forget when they pulled that refrigerator out. That was a moment where, I mean, I got a call from the newsroom saying, oh man, this is like Dahmer. Almost immediately, people in Milwaukee had flashbacks to two decades earlier and one of the most notorious serial killers in world history, Jeffrey Dahmer, 
who was storing body parts in his refrigerator and had multiple victims. This was the fear that Steven Zelich just might be another Jeffrey Dahmer. They had this sexual relationship, very out of the norm. It was the control over these women that he got off on. People that are happy and stable don't do something like this. This was a methodical, well thought out murder. If there's two dead women that are here, how many more are we gonna find? Sex and Murder, a special two hour season premiere, starts Sunday at 10 on HLN.